Hello everybody, one more time my name is Alex Anteno and uh, we're going to uh, continue looking at other two ways of dealing with saturation inside of DaVinci Resolve. So let's get to it. All right, I'm here in DaVinci Resolve uh, version 12 and as we have seen in the previous two videos or three videos we have seen already uh, four techniques to deal with saturation uh, of our images and uh, we're gonna take a look at um, another two uh, techniques really quickly um, I'm gonna show you first let's delete this and um, if you have been following along, uh, you would probably see uh, the separation of luma and chroma technique, uh, except that we were using the color space lab here in between these two nodes. I'm going to change um, the chroma node instead of uh, saying chroma, I have changed it to HSL. Uh, but I'm actually going to delete this so that I show you what I'm doing from scratch. So I am selecting separating node, which is absolutely doing nothing other than just uh, being a split here. Then uh, after the split, we have a Luma node in this Luma node. All I'm doing is coming here to my RGB mixer and clicking monochrome. So that turns, um, my uh, information of color off and so all I have is my luminosity in this channel here in this I'm sorry in this node and then on this side I have the chroma information which so far has all the information from this node and then I'm uniting them with a layer mixer node in composite mode add so that's why it doesn't look correct right now because this one has all the information uh, both luminosity and chrominance. So let me go ahead and uh, not there. Let me select here, create another node. This one is going to be the HSL one. And from here, uh, I'm going to change the color space to HSL and I'm going to get rid of the luminosity, which would be the third channel B here, percent of B here by reducing my curve like so. All right, so that means that now it looks accurate because I only have chrominance here and I have luminance here and together they form all the image. So the technique, uh, this fifth technique to uh, do saturation of our image is by using the second channel of the HSL color space uh, here in the green. So if I was to uh, grab from the middle here and pull up, you can see that I increase the saturation. If I pull down, it decreases the saturation. So pulling up increases the saturation. All right, the same again. I can uh, tone down this by adjusting the key output here. Uh, basically, all I'm doing is selecting channel number two, which is the saturation channel, and then adjusting my curve accordingly. All right, so that's technique number five. I'm going to get rid of that. Uh, and uh, I'm just going to create here a node after after this one. I'm going to call it saturation sixth. And this is the sixth uh, technique for saturation. And it is a compendium or a... a a group, a variety of techniques for saturation. So it's not just one. Um, if we go here to our curves panel, uh, which is the most normal uh, panel to be using, the, f the first one is the most normal to be used. But if we see, if we note these dots here, we can actually see that other things happen. Uh, other curves are capable of being adjusted here. So from the third on, you see that we have a hue versus saturation 
uh, curve adjustment. And so this one allows me to adjust saturation by color. So if I want to adjust the saturation of yellow colors, I can just click there and increase the saturation just for the yellows. Um, I could increase the saturation of the blues, for example, by doing this. I could also, in version 12, I could also have Bezier curves for this. So I can just click here and I can adjust this with a level of uh, increased precision, as you can see. Um, but basically, I'm doing this by hue. So I'm increasing saturation uh, by selecting the hue that I want. I can also decrease saturation by selecting another hue. Uh, the next one is hue versus luminosity. But the fifth one gives us the opportunity of doing saturation by luminosity. So um, a very common technique is to not saturate or desaturate our blacks and our highlights because you don't want uh, color information in those. So you can just uh, saturate the mids and desaturate uh, the shadows. You can do the same desaturating the highlights um, in something like this. Um, obviously you could get more complex than what I'm doing right now. I'm just like showing the technique, but as you can see, I can increase the saturation of my image with this panel as well. Let's go ahead and get rid of that one. And then finally, the sixth choice here is saturation versus saturation. Uh, what that means is that uh, the most uh, saturated colors can be increased in saturation, but also the least saturated colors can be increased in saturation. So I can increase saturation by the saturation that is already in my image. And of course, that gives me a great detail. Uh, I, I'm sorry, a great deal of control over how I want to increase saturation. And now if I combine this, this techniques, so I combine, for example, increasing the saturation only in the colors that are not very saturated. And also I was to increase the saturation of the colors that are uh, in the mid tones. Uh, and I was to use, uh, other techniques that I was using before, for example, like in the chroma here, I can go to my uh, second panel and increase the color boost. So very quickly, you can see that you can start uh, adjusting colors depending on your preferences. Uh, this looks terrible, obviously. My intention is, is not to really, you know, leave it as it is, but it's much better to have great amount of color and then tone it down than to not have appropriate techniques to increase color. Uh, the second thing is that sometimes footage is going to respond much better to certain techniques of color than other techniques. Uh, for example, all you, I'm using so many techniques here that uh, the grade is already coming undone. I mean, some, some places are macro blocking here and so forth. Uh, it looks terrible. Uh, but the point is that uh, by having so many techniques, uh, you can actually mix and match, you can adjust, uh, you can reduce saturation, you can reduce them depending on uh, luminosity, you can uh, adjust them depending on hue, you can uh, increase color boosting, you can just barely increase uh, saturation in one of the channels. So you can just say, I want to increase my saturation in the red channel or in the blue, or you can co change color space and change the saturation for uh, the re re relative, uh, for the yeah, relative distance or the relationship between green and red or between blue and yellow um, and things of that nature. So anyways, this is the sixth, sixth um, technique to adjust saturation for your images. So I hope that this has been helpful, this series on saturation. I, I feel like it's a, a lot, you know, a lot of techniques for saturation. But hopefully with all these techniques, six in total, uh, that you will be able to uh, use the ones that uh, help you the most, stay away from the ones that you feel that are 
not as good for your footage and that you will start enjoying much better digital media. As always, my name is Alex Centeno. Thank you so much for watching and uh, have a great day. Bye-bye.